ตาดูดิฉันหาเจ้าต้องตั้งอ่ะสอเอ่อเอ่อเดิมช่วงเนี่ยเนี่ยที่ดูดิฉันสอคดีน่ะจังหวะกูสุดที่นี่ตาดู
ตัวเซซีโกชโรวะโปอาเซโกเซวาชโรเซซีเซโกเซเนเอ่อเตซีโกยาตาจุมเซนคาร์เซนาตาเตรมาร์ซอนดูเซเอ่อเอ่อทั
Ana iki kedi çetten çoğar sonunu zaman koşuyorlar. Daha cidden terim aldı. Hong Kong, Hong Kong, Zengsen. De tabi cevap cidden de Singapur'de cevap rengade yamgala sohbeti. Yani hiç çağrı var ya. Sizi sonunda koşuyorlar. Cidden cevap renge sonu Hong Kong, Hong Kong, Zengsen. O ati cevap renge sonu ti. O ati tiyandele. O ati ki de ne? Can to ase can ase madaba papa can ati. Bu ase ne de ne? Daha zor. Can çok simple de çetici. Diğer sene mabo bir var da. Mabu beyersinden karısından da zey. Döçü de kasi çinlen, ron kasi on tisi ki zoğun roya mele. Döçü ya çin bu. Bu ati, da te hiye bi tuk yuk ki çan çöp sem ki döçü. Da da ran yi ki döçü tenri var. Da kasi ran yi döçü, yan to çin bu da ran yi döçü var. Ti çama so dük yal. Ti çinlen, bu ati can to beyers, yi döçü yan to çin bu çoğur. Bu ati yi döçü yan to çin bu çoğur. Bu ati yan to na yi da, zoğun roya, ron kasi mongu kasi ona. Dostiko, kala kala cem tu biar ni. So so, dah jadi ni tu. So dah aku jual zaman lama so, pada ni dah mula dengan pasal so dengan jual susu pukul. Dah jadi ni tu, aku jadi orang jual ni, aku dia jual sian ni, aku tu. Tapi cik lepas sama tu, tapi ni ada ni no. So aku tu jadi ni tu, so dah dah pukul. Dah jadi ni tu. Tapi tu, yang so cem bocor ni, tu warm air pun, tu warm air pun, tu tu dia juga gosong tu kisah ni. Aku tu tu warm air pun, tu dia tu. Dulu tu tetapi kita tolak ni, orang tiada kegunaan soal tu kan? Ah, tu ni, betul ni kita jual jasa orang zaman, betul ni, betul tu zaman tu tangguh kita, betul ni kita jual jasa orang zaman tu, zaman tu siapa dia kegunaan siapa? Ah, so then the mantra, um, so Baba Shudha Sava Dharma, so Baba Shudha Ham. Um, means that all phenomena are empty. Emptiness is my nature. Um, so here you meditate um, in a state of emptiness without any concepts. Everything is pure into empty, purified into emptiness. And then from within this state of emptiness appear a wind fire and um, a hearth of skulls. Um, first there is the wind mandala, <coughs> um, which... Um, has the shape of uh, a bow, and um, it is the um, the flat side that is um, facing one, and then to the left and the right of the wind mandala are um, banners that are like um, like kind of um, flowing around in the wind, um, fluttering in the wind, um, and then on top of the wind mandala is a triangular shaped fire mandala. And on top of that are um, three skulls. And on top of the three skulls is um, kapala, a skull cup that is vast and, and extensive. Um, and um, then from on this from arm arises a vast and by Kapala, and then inside it, from Bira, Ma, Mu, and Shu, arise the five nectars. So there's the five nectars, and then um, Nago, Daha, and Gu. Um, then from these arise the five meat, and five cans of flesh, um, which are um, marked with Hum, Brum, Am, Jim, and Kam, which represent the five Buddha families. So once you have set up this horse of skulls, then from below, the banners on the wind mandala begin to flutter. And that fanning of the wind causes the fire to burn. And the substances inside the kapala boil and all impurities are being purified. Um, so then the purified substance becomes bodhicitta or wisdom nectar. And those five syllables, hum, brum, am, chim, and kam, uh, represent the uh, five of the Yani Buddhas together with their, their consorts. So once the nectar becomes purified, um, it becomes the nature of wisdom or bodhicitta. So that it says through purifying, realizing, and flaring, the purifying is, so through the boiling, it becomes purified. The realizing is that it assumes the nature of bodhicitta or wisdom nectar. 
And flaring means that it increases. It becomes inexhaustible. And inexhaustible, no matter how much the guests uh, partake, it, 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 it is never exhausted. Um, so, and, and their minds become satisfied. So here in this context, we are offering to we're offering it to the guests, which are the three jewels in Chakrasambara, the deity. Uh, sometimes somewhere else, elsewhere, we have four kinds of guests. Uh, but here, the principal guest is the Ambidam deity. And then there's the syllables Omahung, which are the seed syllables of enlightened body, speech, and mind. And so then with the Omahung, the nectar, when, when consecrating the nectar, one then takes part of the nectar uh, with one's thumb and ring finger and places it onto one's tongue. And this then causes an experience of bliss and emptiness to arise. What uh um, then um, for the kapala, the skull cup, there's different kinds of skull cups. There are some skulls that have a lot of lines in them, um, and that's not ideal. So the the best kapala for use in this practice is a kapala that has ideally no lines it is um, quite smooth and it is said that this kind of um, kapala can generate bliss emptiness and then the offering is made to the yidam chakrasambara elaborately consisting of 62 uh, chakrasambara deities and so you have um Eight, um, three different wheels of body, speech, and mind. And in each wheel, there are eight deities. Um, so there are um, eight deities in the body uh, mandala, eight in the speech, and eight in the mind. And then you add to that the consorts, which are eight each. So then you have 48 deities. Then there is eight um, gatekeepers which is 56 then. Then there's four heart bikinis, makes 60. And then you have the yap and the yum, the main deities, so that's 62. That's the 62 Ashakasambara deities. And for the nectar, the essence of the nectar uh, are the five Buddha families. And we purify the nectar because we have an ordinary perception. We have ordinary thoughts of pure and impure. And so if we transform the nectar 
then it clears away these ordinary um, concepts and then through the partaking of the nectar, it is said that um, as our, these concepts are cleared away, our practice naturally becomes enhanced. So there are many benefits to that. Um, so then, um, next we are again consecrating, um, now we are consecrating the preliminary, preliminary dorma. So we repeat the above recitation because the visualization for consecrating the preliminary dorma is the same. Oh, what um, so then on the next page, uh, 22, there's the mantra on Kaka Kai Kai and so on. So here we are making a preliminary Dharma offering to the various local guardians, the gods, and um, so forth, the various spirits. And the meaning is on the next page, but basically we are offering the Dharma to them and ask them um, take it and eat it and help us. And mainly when we make the Dharma offering, we must do so with love and compassion. Um, so then having made this offering, they all become um, gods who help us, who um, assistants who help us in our practice of virtue of the Dharma. And for that, love and compassion is essential because if we do not cultivate love and compassion, then even if somebody was a helper before, if we do not have any love and compassion for them, then maybe they will stop helping and will not always help us. So when we make this offering, we have to offer with love and compassion. <laughs> Chobata, <laughs> Uh what 
این دوش گوز سامو چو بازه دو گوز سامو چو بازه سی با می بتون دار اصاله تا سی هم که دونه چو بازه چو خوره این دو بیجا کشی نایور دالا می با جای جامی استین دو کانسو تا یانسه چو بازه پوی جیسه تا دو که دونه کار دونه دو چو خوره تا سو دو جمع کمیناته دو که دونه تا یک دونه موسن جو تان یک دونه لب گره موسن جو با یک دونه چو بازه آتا موسن جو بازه یک دونه چو بازه تلو یور با آتا یک دونه تلو چو بازه پوی چو and then on page 24 um, comes the consecration of uh, the offerings. And so also before um, here and also before when we recite these mantras here, um, um, when we are making these consecrations, we are also um, sprinkling some of the nectar and some of the base water on tomb the dorma previously and the offerings here um and so then again the same visualization with um kendara hum hum pet you visualize that um so then at this point then from the nectar red dakinis many red dakinis um, emanate into the offerings and send away all the hindrances that are in the offerings send them far away so that they can return. Um, and then Om Spa Baba mantra, the same as before. And then again, from the state of emptiness and so forth. So then um, I think that the offerings become inconceivably vast and anything can be offered. Um, you offer things that are owned and things that are unowned. Anything can be brought to mind and and made an offering. Um, it is said that the entire outer universe and all sentient beings can be brought to mind and made an offering. Actually, Chik Din Somgen said in the Gong Ching that uh, for the accumulation of merit when making offerings, um, the greatest offering is to or accumulation of merit is to bring um, to mind um whatever exists and make that an offering so even if there are things that you don't own in the world in the natural environment for example you can think that um now they are mine and now i'm making these an offering and in this way you accumulate great merit so here we are consecrating the offerings then through the consecration the offerings become vast and inconceivable so even though we have for example those water bowls on our shrine we shouldn't think of them in this limited small way but think that these represent vast offerings that pervade the billionfold universe and we speak about samantha badra offerings samantha badra offerings basically mean that the offerings are inexhaustible um so think that these offerings are made and everyone uh, receives all the guests receive everything that they that they desire uh, so normally we talk about there being two kinds of offerings there is the mentally created and the actually arranged the physically arranged material offerings and so here we are speaking about uh, those uh, mentally created offerings we can bring anything to mind and make it an offering so this is the purification of the offerings ゲモティクテ、え、ちょめてプーサルワ。
So the mind is most important. When the Buddha was alive, there was an old woman who offered a butter lamp. Um, she offered the butter lamp with a completely pure motivation of bodhicitta, um, um, thinking of all sentient beings. And now she made this offering, um, and <coughs> so ver various lamp offerings were made, and then um, by other people's tomb, and then all of them were already gone, um, extinguished. Just her, her butter lamp was still burning. And because it was daytime, um, Ananda thought that there is no need to have a lamp burning at, at daylight. So he tried to uh, extinguish her lamp too, but he couldn't. It just wouldn't go out. And so he asked the Buddha, and the Buddha said, it's because this lamp was offered with bodhicitta, and therefore no one can extinguish it. So the mind is most important, and that old woman's mind was completely pure, a pure mind of, of bodhicitta. So that's most important when we make an offering that we offer um, you know, with such a pure intention. Uh, and then on page 25, the offering mantra. Um, Argam is the um, uh, water to, uh, to drink. Then um, Ansa, man, Ansa man is the um, uh, water to wash the face. Um, Prakshanam is a kind of a sprinkling, refreshing water. Um, then Padyam is the water to wash the feet. Um, Bushbam is the flowers, which is an offering to the eyes. Um, Dupam is incense, the offering to the nose. Alokam is lamp offering, also to the eyes. Um, Gandam the offering um, perf of perfume um, to the body. Um, Nevedyam, offering of food. And Shapta, the offering of uh, music. And then there are the syllables in Om, and in the end, always Ahum. Um, Omahum are the consecrating mantras here. And in the end, it says Vajra. Um, um, so Om Vajra, and the Vajra here in this context means that the offerings are completely pure. Uh, 
ちょっと待ってパジャンブロディ、セラーショット。あちまでなんべちか。てなかんせいやわんせいとこまでしてんぶろてやわんせいけです。てなどもディボまでちょうどバンダアタキャケテルゾンオレて。わてんで。あ、
to be liberated from samsara, we need someone who is already liberated from samsara. And that is only the Buddha. But that is why we take refuge in the Buddha. Um, and then having taken refuge in the Buddha, um, we practice the, the path. Um, and so without um, a support on the path, that is also difficult. So we, ha- we rely on a Sangha who, who guides us along the path. And then if we practice the Dharma, then we attain enlightenment. Um, Milarepa said, the Buddha, Dharma, and the Sangha are the outer sor- sources of refuge or the common refuge. Um, so here it says, I unceasingly take refuge. And it, that refers to, in terms of the timing, uh, for how long we take refuge. Because that de- also depends on one's mind generation. There is some who take refuge for as long as they live until they die. And then here, however, we take refuge unceasingly until until we attain a state of enlightenment. And so the ultimate refuge is the Buddha only. Um, because once we have attained realization and experience, then we don't we no longer need the Dharma and the Sangha. So therefore the Buddha is said to be the ultimate refuge. Uh Amila <coughs> Ripa also said the um, Lama Yidam and Dakini are the inner refuge. Um, and inner refuge refers to the refuge of the secret mantra Vajrayana, <coughs> also referred to as the three roots. So the three um, Lama Yidam and Dakini. Um, and so here in the Lama is the Buddha, the Yidam is the Dharma, and the Dakini is the Sangha. Um, the Yidam is the Dharma because um, of, like the Yidam comprises of various Dharma practices like the mantra recitation and so on. And so here on page 26, um, so we have the Buddha, Dharma, and the Sangha, and then a Yogin. The Yogin is uh, Chakra Samvara or the Buddha. Then the secret mantra is the um, um, Dharma. And Dakini is the Ratini or the Sangha, consisting of um, the Dakini or the four Dakinis and so on. Um, so these are the embodiments of the three wheels of body, speech, and mind. And then there is the male and female spiritual warriors, the Ratini, that we take refuge in. Um, also, Milarepa then said, the channels, winds, and drops are the inner refuge. Appearance, emptiness, and their indivisibility are the ultimate refuge. Um, therefore, since I have gained certainty in that, um, I suggest you do the same. Oh, that's 
但是这头就当，搿些人对家搿些人也勿做唔得，我在山东啊，讲究生计啊。可是呢，就是在为生计噻，就是在为生计噻。那他就是说，别家老头子问了，老头子也咋讲了？那，你可能讲里大多的是没谁没有老头子，没谁没有大，这是老头子也爱人啊，对噻。我这身边他们也上街，啥能说说上街啊？上楼道呀？但是生计的，我这就是在为生计噻。哦，等于你把这卫生体系，但你把这卫生体系能搞得成呢？除除除外了，我嘞，样子，但是人家新疆他们样子要上进，要怎么办呀？我这里，但嗯，哦，等于把这卫生体系，但除了是在同那所说的样子吧，去把统统给把，就当年在同样子统统给把在哪里？你把这卫生体系，我这假如这卫生体系，假如这卫生体系吧，这他当保障假如差。我真的，呃，这身体他们也上级啥子国家上级办完的，假如我得有身体意识，我这，嗯，我这里，他假如我得有身体意识，我，呃，他假如这是假如我强，那真的是，呃，有有看不见我要不凶他，有看上马对吧？过头不了，我这有看到我这有了这有这上级身体上级上级国家，但你讲他他，他当部队长还是干啥呢？真的，呃，身体他们还是恐怕强了，我是他假如我得有身体意识，意思了啊。可是呢，他让这当地人们知道了，第一就是说，我这几率，我这呢，呃呃，升级，我这里，他这当地，啊，我谈这个。嗯 ，Then next is the um mind generation of Bodhicitta. For the sake of all sentient beings, I will become Haruka and establish all sentient beings in the supreme state of Haruka. Um, in some Scriptures, some scriptures describe three kinds of mind generation. The first one is the um, shepherd-like mind generation. Um, so here, one is like a, a sheep, um, a sheep's shepherd, and one watches the sheep from far away, and one always goes last. The sheep go first. So the intention is to, to first bring all sentient beings to enlightenment, and then um, I, I myself come last. So that's the shepherd-like mind generation. The second one is the um, the captain-like mind generation, a, ca a ship captain. So when a captain goes on a ship with his passengers, then they all go together. They reach the other shore together. So the intention is self and other shall attain enlightenment together. And then the third mind generation is the king-like mind generation. And so like a king, one thinks that first I am the king. So first I have to make sure that the kingdom runs well and then everyone else will be happy. Then I will have to, once I'm a powerful king, then I have the power to benefit others. So the intention here is that first I am attaining enlightenment, and then I'm bringing all sentient beings to enlightenment. So here it says, for the sake of sentient beings, I will become Haruka. So uh, this is similar to the, this king-like mind generation. But first I'm Haruka, and then I'm bringing all sentient beings to that state. 哦，等于就当他眼子，等于老师话的，前半时的，就当前半时，当部的，你啥不不，前半时的，听一点的，这里，但说说听，可能觉得在前半的，我在前半的，人家的，人家的，但那在强调身体健康的，我听你呃，强调身体的，他才得眼睛巴的，强调身体，强人家几个不得出嘛的，强调身体的，呃，但人家身体健康没的，身体健康了没的，现在不做这样的没关系哇，他对你不如那强调身体。我当时养的，我对那身边同学在下是呀，上呃身边同学上街上过一路，怎么我的说嘛的，我在强调身体的了哇，我在记。Um, and so regarding this mind generation of love, compassion, and bodhicitta, first love arises, and love arises when we remember the kindness of others. And then from love arises compassion, and from compassion arises bodhicitta. So bodhicitta is not just、um, love and compassion, but bodhicitta means that with compassion you think of, of of sentient beings and wish to clear away their suffering, and with wisdom you、um, think about establishing them in the state of complete enlightenment. So that's the definition of bodhicitta. Is 
uh, wishing to free sentient beings from suffering and uh, to establish them in the state of enlightenment. Oh, then, uh, てね、だてれまあ、そうで、え、で、その、この感じで、ちょっとだけ、あ、そこから組み合わせ、あ、どういう感じ。わ、てね、だ、家に、家で、家に、家に、家で、家に、家、え、え、へるか、せ、べ、
ま、とはてね、ジョンアシケル。ルギール。なさどんがてね、ジョンセワで、なさどんがさまがとこんごでがてな。あ、とんごでかんちょんぐらな、さどんがさま、だぜこ。かでみなまでさま、こんごなるし
sickness and discomfort and so on. Because actually it is his thoughts that create so much torment. We torment ourselves with our thinking by thinking of I'm so sick and I'm never well and I'm so much pain. So we are um, making a big um, suffering, a big problem out of something that is much smaller. And so once it becomes a big problem, um, then it is really um, very difficult. So of course it's true we do have <clears throat> aches and pains, but mainly the like the, <clears throat> the misery that comes along with it really comes from our thinking, our conceptual mind. And so therefore, if we attain some stability in, in practice, then we realize that suffering or these aches and pains, they lack actually, it all lacks any true inherent existence. So that is when we realize the unity of appearance and, and emptiness. That is when you realize that sickness and suffering lack any true existence. Uh what what's and then my sense sources are the bodhisattvas. Um, so there are six sense sources, and the, um, sen the, the eye sense source is the bodhisattva earth essence. The ear sense source is the Bodhisattva Vajrapani. The nose sense source is the Bodhisattva Sky Essence. The tongue sense source is the Bodhisattva Chinrizig. And the body, the physical sense source, is the Bodhisattva um, Free. Um, the free from all obscurations, and the um, mind sense source um, bodhisattva is Ananta Bhadra. So these are the six bodhisattvas, and their corresponding sense objects are the six female bodhisattvas. And you no, know, as Milarepa said before, if we do not realize what they are, then we become attached, we cling a sense so, through the connection of the sense sources with the sense objects, we develop clinging attachment. For example, the, um, the nose is attached to s smell, sense, and the tongue is attached to um, flavors. So for as long as we 
are attached and we perceive things in a dualistic subject object manner we cannot realize the true nature of the sense sources and the elements which is that they're actually our bodhisattvas um, and also our aggregates for as long as we cling to this concept of subject and object duality and we perceive things that way uh, we cannot see that the aggregates are the five Buddha, Buddha families and the elements are the five mothers, the five um, Dakinis, and the six sense sources are the bodhisattvas and the objects, the female bodhisattvas. We cannot recognize that. Um, because you know, when, we, when we come in touch with a pleasant smell, then we develop all kinds of feelings towards that of um, wanting it or not wanting it and develop many thoughts of attachment and aversion. And the same goes for food. We develop many thoughts in terms of liking or disliking food and so on. And so this is why we do not recognize that they are actually the male and the female bodhisattvas. But when we do not grasp, when we do not cling to um, those sense objects and the sense sources and so on, then we will just naturally recognize that they are the male and the female bodhisattvas and so forth. ตัวที่เอ่อเอ่อสมควรจะเต็มที่ได้ที่จะเต็มได้ได้เพียงเท่าไหร่ <laughs> ว่าที่ตาอันสมบัติที่จุกละขนาดตัวติงอโลเลยสิอืมเนี่ยมันรับคนที่ยังเกิดตาชอบตั้งขึ้นอืมอืมอืมอืมอืมอืมอืมอื
for example, when the Buddha attained enlightenment at Bodh Gaya, the Mara demons displayed various kinds of apparitions and hindrances, and he overcame them. And so, therefore, as kind of an auspicious connection for our own enlightenment, we are now generating this protection sphere. And so the four Zumbani mantras are on page um, 81. Um, on page 81, um, so the first one is Om Zumbani Zumbani Hum Hum Pet. Then second one, Om Grihana Grihana Hum Hum Pet. The third one, Om Gri um, Grihana Paya Grihana Paya Hum Hum Pet. And then Om Anayaho Bhagavan Vajra Hum Hum Pet. Um, can I go back? Um, what? This girl. Shadi Napura. Then nobody shared Charva. Chang. 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 Then ちょっと待って。さあ、ちょっと待って。さあ、手を見せてください。はい。これ読まめば聞いてるね。おいおい、読まめね。さあ、どれでも、これ読まれ。さあ、で、ピカ。うん。どれ、ね、どれ、ガ
mantras in the cardinal directions are um, so they are rotating counterclockwise and um, the intermediate directions um, circle clockwise um, and um, <coughs> uh, so then uh, they emanate in the four directions and transform into an indestructible um, Raja fence ground. So, uh, um, so they become a, an invisible protection sphere that has the nature of the four immeasurables, love, compassion, joy, and equanimity. And an indestructible Raja ground um, is completely um, um, unshakable. Um, and it is said that the only place in our world that has that quality is Bodh Gaya, which is why it is said that all the thousand Buddhas of this fortunate aeon attain enlightenment in Bodh Gaya. So it is a completely um, uh, invincible, steadfast place. And it is actually said in, even, in some scriptures even that even when the, when the aeon comes to an end, the Bodh Gaya will still remain. Um, so you have the Advajra fence, ground, web, tent, canopy, and a dome of wisdom flames, becoming a vast protection sphere, solid, secure, and utterly terrifying. It is impregnable to obstructors, even to Brahma. So Brahma is said to be the most um, powerful obstructor because um, he has a very high um, like level of birth. So even Brahma cannot harm. So leave alone um, smaller hindrances, but even greater hindrances cannot cause any harm. Oh, then the joke that God did was that on Banzar made in the Banzar of Honsetin, Dorje Sagidon, for sure, said it. Tinjo, not a Dorje Caravan Ronch. Tinjo, not a Dorje Corn Ronch. Or Tinjo, the Dorje Ladge said in the Ladge Ronch. Or did it sound on Jumate, uh, and then the mantra that follows um, has the same meaning as the previous six elements that are made out of Vajra. So, um, um, Medini Vajra, um, the first one is a Vajra fence, second one, the Vajra ground. Um, um, I want to see four. No, sorry, the first one is the Vajra ground, there's no fence. Vajra web, Vajra tent, Vajra canopy. And, um, um, was it <laughs> one, two, three, four? Yeah, mm -hmm. and then the sixth one, um, Anna Larka is the um, wisdom flames. お、ちちたてでてるたつこてたやこさんのたてこんこれすこんこかんちちたつこてとこやてやたちちねたてましゅんでたつこげんてれお、つげんてたらんへるかせでたらんへるかせよらたらんかでなんてたんくねじょれ
Then on the next page is the field of accumulation. Um, so we have visualized ourselves as Haruka, Straka, Samvara, which we continuously do. And then the light radiating from the home at the heart of myself appearing as Haruka invites the guru and the gathering of Chakra Samara deities into the space before me, um, Vajra Samaja. So we are inviting principally the root guru indivisibly from Chakra Samara and all the Chakra Samara deities. And we are inviting the field of accumulation in order for us to accumulate merit. And then the mantra next mantra namo means to pay homage a guru is the guru and then um so basically i pay homage to the guru and i pay homage to the mandala of glorious chakra sambara oh the jidene that re mal so the choba re choba de ta chi chi choba na chi choba song me choba se kona ni choba she yo de ta de ma oh choba de ji ta tang bo de Tachinchobat, <laughs> Oh, <laughs> Then on page 31, um, the offering mantra. So we have outer, inner, secret, and suchness offerings. This one is the outer offering. Um, it begins uh, with Om, which is the beginning of the mantra. Um, Haruka, so Shri is glorious, and Haruka um, actually means blood drinker. And uh, regarding this term blood drinker, you might think that is a um, little bit of a strange name, also slightly scary. Um, but what it means is that the ocean of samsara is like an ocean of blood. And the drinker means that he dries up the ocean of samsara. Okay, so it doesn't mean that he, he drinks the blood of sentient beings. Um, so that's what a blood drinker means. And then um, Sabarivara means together with your retinue. Um, then Argam, the offering as before. And Praditsa um, is please take it, please accept it. And then Soha is the end of the mantra. And so the mantra, the different, I mean, the different offerings, we already went through them before. Oh, the cheating, eh? The joke, the the carrier, eh? Um, eh? Rimajuru, Rimajuru, the <laughs> we take a little break. Uh, uh, like 15 minutes, right, Christina? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I take So then we meet back again at, um, what's it, 3.45. Yeah, okay. Then this, uh, I'll see you